Hey there, Tony Policastro here from Tony's Acoustic Challenge. And if you hate using guitar picks, this lesson is for you. So often I hear this problem that guitar geeks have, and that is, man, I, I really want to strum along to a song, but I don't like using a guitar pick. It's, it's really uncomfortable. I feel disconnected from the strings, and I just it spins around and I have no control over it. Well, that's okay. I think so often we get kind of shunted into uh, either a straight ahead finger style or straight ahead flat picking that we seldom realize that there's actually this beautiful middle ground in between those two sides of the spectrum. And that's what I'm gonna share with you today. So if you hate using a guitar pick, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you three ways to strum without a pick. And no, right off the bat, I wanna tell you, it's not cheating. It's just a different way to make music. So first and foremost, as far as the fretting hand, through all of my uh, descriptions and explanations today, I'm just gonna be using a simple G chord, okay? So I'm gonna make a, a basic G chord, my pinky finger on the third fret of the high E, ring finger, third fret of the B, middle finger, second, uh, so rather third fret of the low E, and index finger, second fret of the A. It's the basic G chord, okay? Because really I really wanna focus on the right hand technique or the picking hand technique if you happen to be a lefty. So there's three techniques I wanna share with you, and I just want you to know right off the bat that each of these techniques, they kind of graduate in terms of difficulty. So uh, if this is brand new to you, this is a great place to start. The very first technique I'm gonna share with you is what I like to call the thumb brush, okay? There's also an, uh, a, a modification we can make to it. Uh, we can call it the finger brush too, but let's start with the, fr uh, the thumb brush because all you're gonna do for this is take your thumb, the meaty part of your thumb, and just literally brush against the strings. That's all you have to do, okay? And I want you to get comfortable with it. It seems really easy, and, and ultimately it is, but there's a couple of things I want you to watch out for. Number one, I don't want you to press too hard, because if you press too hard, it's gonna feel chunky, and then it's gonna feel like your thumb gets caught on the strings, okay? So go ahead and be nice and gentle with the thumb, and let gravity do the work. Let the weight of your hand pull the thumb down, and you'll get a nice, even strum. Now, a great way to practice this is just to go ahead and do it on a straight quarter note beat. So it would be like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And when you get used to that, you can start to throw in eighth notes, which would be an up strum. So it would be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Conversely, if the thumb isn't jiving with you and you think, I, I want a little bit more articulation, I want a little bit more stringiness out of the guitar, you can use the tops of your fingernails, right? You can use all four fingers or two or three, whichever, whichever's more comfortable for you. And literally, you're gonna do that same motion, but instead of the thumb hitting the strings, it'll be the top of the fingernails. You'd practice it the same way and the same technique applies. You want gravity to do the work. You don't wanna be flicking the strings like this. You wanna let gravity do the work so you get a nice even tone and a nice even strum. So that's the first technique, the thumb brush or the finger brush, whichever one works for you. The second one I like to call the thumb chick or the thumb chicka because we're gonna combine both the thumb and the finger strum to add a little bit more dynamic to our playing, okay? So the thumb's gonna handle the bass notes on beats one and three, and we're gonna strum on beats two and four. Okay, and that's, that's gonna sound like this. Again, I'm just holding down a G chord for reference, and the thumb, chick, strum will sound like this. It'll go thumb, chick, thumb, chick, thumb, chick, thumb, chick. And all my thumb's doing here, all my thumb is doing here, is bouncing in between the low E string and the D string. Okay, on the one and the three beat, and then I'm strumming on the two and the four. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Now, if you want to add a little bit more uh, dynamic to this particular strum, you can add an eighth note after the two and the four beat. So it would go two and four and, and those would be up strums. So that would sound like this. One, two, and three, four, and. One, two, and three, four, and. And on that up strum, all I'm doing is literally just hitting that high E string for an accent, just an added little sonic layer. And again, the same principles apply. You want your thumb and your, and your fingers to, um, you don't wanna be forcing the strum or the thumb pluck. You wanna let gravity do the work because that'll give you the most even tone and ultimately the most control. Now, the third technique I'm gonna share with you is really uh, one of the best um, stepping stones 
to get to eventually using a flat pick. So if you think, okay, I like strumming, I dig it, and eventually I am gonna use a flat pick, this technique is absolutely for you. And I like to call it the fake pick. So literally, you're gonna take your thumb and your index finger, act like you're holding a pick, and go ahead and strum as if you were holding a pick, but without the worry that the pick's gonna go flying because, well, there, there is none. Uh, you can move your other three fingers just out of the way. Uh, and again, I'm gonna use the top of my fingernail here, so you're gonna hear a little bit of articulation. But keep in mind that if you don't have a fingernail, you can still use this technique. It's just gonna sound a little bit more uh, muffled, maybe a little bit more woody. You won't be able to pull as much volume out of the guitar. And that's okay, again, this is just a stepping stone. So that fake pick, fake pick method, uh, you're just gonna maintain that steady quarter note uh, down strum just to get used to it, and then you can incorporate the up strum later, just like this. So this is the steady quarter note. One, two, three, four. And then of course, as you get used to that, you can add in that eighth note. One and two and three and four and. And ultimately, this particular technique, the more comfortable you get with it, allows you to really strum in a variety of patterns, kind of some classic syncopated or even bluegrass style patterns like this. So there you have it, three ways to strum without a pick, and I wanna just underline and boldface the statement that it's not cheating, okay? There's, there's a variety, there's a ton of players out there that strum without a pick and do so with great success. Coulter Wall is the first one that comes to mind. Yes, he does some straight ahead finger style stuff, but he does this wonderful strumming technique that's full, it's accurate, it sounds beautiful, and he's not using a pick. So you know what, it's not cheating. In fact, none of this is cheating. If you're making awesome music, that's the bottom line. That's all you have to uh, measure up to, if you will. In fact, I'd like, to keep, I'd like you to keep in mind three key principles regardless of what strumming technique you use, whether it be with a pick, whether it be with just your fingers, and I like to call them the three T's. I want you to have good tone, maintain good technique, and have good timing. Those are the three things. If those three things are covered, then you're gonna be all set. And I wanna encourage you, if you find a pattern that's kind of like one of these that I showed you, that you think, oh, I kinda like this one more, then go with it, follow that muse. As long as you're paying attention to those three T's, tone, technique, and timing, and that all sounds good, then you're well on your way. Thanks so much for checking this lesson out, and I hope it helps you bring your playing to the next level. And if you wanna continue taking your playing to the next level, I wanna encourage you to check out Tony's Acoustic Challenge. Go ahead and click on the link here in the video or in the description below. Learn more about Tony's Acoustic Challenge, and if it sounds like a direction that you wanna take your playing, I wanna encourage you to request your invite today. Thanks so much for checking out the lesson, and I hope to see you on Tony's Acoustic Challenge.